Welcome to the world's number one fitness business podcast for health club owners, gym managers, and fitness entrepreneurs. As always, this will be a great show as we have another expert to help your fitness business and your career. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Active Management, for supporting us. And we highly recommend becoming a member of Active Management to strengthen your business in 2016. There are loads of resources members receive, so join the Active Tribe today at www.activemgmt.com.au. Now that's enough from me. Let's welcome the show's amazing host, Chantal. What's on this week's show? Hi, everybody. I hope you have had a sensational week. We are in week two of our one-year birthday celebrations. And this week, I've got another great guest for you, one of our four most downloaded guests from 2015-2016, and that is Tim Keatley. Last time I caught up with Tim, it was back in show 25, and we talked about recruiting personal trainers, we talked about evaluating their performance and keeping them motivated. This time, we discussed how to keep PTs in your business for longer, the major challenges facing fitness businesses in 2016, and what trends we're going to see in the industry in the year ahead. Now, to get us started, it's time to announce our gold, silver, and bronze medal winners for the most downloads in May. Bronze goes to Jeb Blunt, part two, and that was in show 52. Silver goes to Jeb Blunt in part one, show 51, and the gold was taken out by our Q&A show, which featured Adrian Antigua, and that was show 50. So don't forget to go and check out those shows if you haven't caught them already. Now, also really important during June and July, we've got a really special birthday present for all of you guys. And if you haven't already claimed your gift, make sure that you stay tuned right to the end of the show to hear what you need to do. I want to do a shout out to one of our fantastic sponsors. It's Visual Fitness Planner. If you're a health club owner and you haven't checked out the VFP, then you need to. So jump over to www.vfp.us for more information. Hey, it's JT here from Active Management, and I just wanted to wish a very happy first birthday to the Fitness Business Podcast. Congratulations, Chantel, and all the guests for an amazing year, and I look forward to a second year. Hey, this is Lisa Simone Richards from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, from Vitality PR and Communications and Make Media Friends, and I wanted to wish the Fitness Business Podcast a very happy first birthday. Thank you so much for all the amazing content you guys share with us. I love the episodes on using brand fanatics to grow your business, how to use social media and providing industry insights. You guys have so much excellent information you're always giving the community, so thanks for that. Happy birthday, and cheers to another great year of information. This month, we have an awesome prize for people who subscribe to the show notes at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or engage with the Fitness Business Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even emailing us. Do it and you may be this month's winner. Now it's time for this week's guest. Well, first things first, I want to say a huge, very warm welcome back to the show, Tim Keatley. G'day and thanks for having me back. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you back. Now, are you ready for your quick fire five questions? Uh, yes, I'll give it my best. Give it your best. Okay, why do you do what you do? Uh, love to make a difference that has a purpose and one day would like to leave a legacy that others will benefit from. That's lovely. And what's the best advice that you've ever received? You can do this if you really want to. Mm, good advice. What's a personal habit that helps you become better at what you do? Uh, it's probably three that jump out. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is working out, being a product of our product. Two is every single day I have five key life goals that I repeat to myself during the workout. And third and finally, having the belief and mentality of a child. Therefore, they don't believe in consequences. They only believe in going for it. What's one book that you'd recommend and why? Uh, Wayne Dyer. You will see it when you believe it. It was a a life-changing moment for me back in the mid-90s. I was playing sport for a living. Technically, I was supposed to be very good. Everybody said I was going to win, and I couldn't win. And uh, when all said and done, it was because of my belief system. I was a big fan of uh, I'll Believe It When I See It. Uh, So it was a life-changing book, and I've probably read it four times since. And why should our tribe come back next week and listen to our show? (laughs) 
Maybe there's just one thing they might hear that will make a real difference either to them, their client, or to their future. And worst case scenario, maybe we'll have a laugh anyway. I think so. I think we'll definitely have some fun. Now, uh, thank you very much for that, Tim. I look forward to you joining us next week for your main interview. (laughs) Thank you. Look forward to it. Through the magic of podcasts, we don't have to wait a week. I have the full interview with Tim right now. Tim Keatley is an experienced visionary leader, and he's been the driving force behind some of the most successful health and fitness brands in the world. He has a track record that includes creating the largest personal training business in Europe and elevating some of the most successful in the US to new levels. Tim is also a highly sought after speaker who inspires people with his motivating and captivating presentations about teamwork and his one team philosophies. Most recently, Tim was a key executive behind the expansion of Gold's Gym International as the Executive Vice President of Operations. He now shares his knowledge and expertise with leading brands on a variety of projects as a senior advisor with the Fitmark and Intergis organisations. And as you will see in this week's show notes, he really knows how to have fun. Tribe, I definitely encourage you to go and check out the pics that he shared with us on this week's show notes. Okay, here we go into our interview with Tim Keatley. Tim, are you ready to fit by our global FBP tribe of fitness business owners and managers? As they would say in New York, booyah, boom, baby, let's do this. I love it. And are you ready to overload our tribe with pearls of wisdom, strategies for success and tips to make them better leaders and business people? If they're all ears, I'm all mouth. Excellent. We are going to get stuck into it straight away. Now, I just shared your bio with all of our tribe, and it's fair to say that you've had an incredible history. You've got a incredible career in the fitness industry. Tell me this. Have you had any roadblocks on your road to success? Uh, more roadblocks than success, absolutely. Might have mentioned it many times when speaking to people, but um Learning that what works today doesn't necessarily work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What works today in one country certainly doesn't work in another. For example, when I came over here to the USA in 2005, having had um, a fortunate and successful career in Europe and partly Australia for a while, everything I did failed. It took me six months to realize that, uh, how should I put it, cultures are different, what motivates people are different. So yes, many, many failures along the way. Right now, for example, uh, since our last conversation, I'm trying to actually depart and run two careers. Tell Uh, us about that. Well, uh, I mentioned before I read Wayne Dyer's book. That was when I was uh, playing professional golf in Europe on some of the tours. And uh, long story short, I got injured, so never found out if I was ever really going to make it. Between our last conversation and now, um, I've been working towards... There's a thing called the Champions Tour, which is for the 50-year-olds. And I, I'm a huge fan of uh, the only regret in life is wishing you had done something, not wishing you hadn't. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't want to be sat in a boardroom, being in a gym, working four weeks every month, thinking when I'm 52, I wonder if I could have made it as a golfer. So right now I'm splitting my time, very early mornings, late evenings, practicing like hell. Uh, failing constantly because I'm playing against 20 year olds so I'm given 30 years 30 yards and many other attributes but you know what doesn't kill you is going to make you stronger so even right now to this day I'm uh, working through failure in order to find success Tim that is phenomenal what a great challenge to take on so let me ask you this do you is there a tournament or something like that coming up and, and when is it Yep. In fact, just after we spoke last time, they have what's called tour school, which is where all the uh, geriatrics like myself can go and try and qualify for the Champions Tour. It's actually the hardest tour to get on. The spots are so few. And that was in November, and I just missed out last year. Mm -hmm. So now what I try and do is I try and compete in at least two professional events every month. That way I sharpen my skills, harness my experience, and develop my craft so that by the time... Um, November rolls around again, I'll be ready to go. Well, I look forward to staying in touch and hearing how you go with that. And I have to remind you, I I much preferred it when you said recycled teenagers rather than (laughs) geriatrics. 
<laughs> if you remember, I did warn you I was about to become one. Well, I have become. <laughs> I, I love that term. I still I still refer to it today. I love it. Okay, yeah. let's keep let's keep cracking now, tribe. If you happened to miss Tim's last interview with us, I'm sure most of you have heard it, but just in case you didn't, we talked a lot around personal trainers, and and that's a huge area of your expertise. So I'm keen to hit you up about a little bit in that topic again, Tim, if that's okay. Absolutely. What I'm keen to understand from your point of view is what are the major challenges that impact personal trainers today that are trying to build their own businesses? Uh, One of the hardest things today actually is with the clients rather than the personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And if you also remember from last time, we call them personal trainers because that's exactly what it is. So from a personal trainer's point of view, having a client understand that this is not a quick fire success where you then go back to your old habits. This is a life changing journey that technically never ends. If we want proof of that, we only have to look at the the latest studies that have come out from the people who have lost all their weight on the biggest loser Mm -hmm. and have almost put all of it back on over the past few years. People tend to be very impatient. That's one of the biggest challenges of the personal trainer because if you don't deliver me a result, I'm going somewhere else. I'm going down the road. I'll try so and so. And that's the nature of, to be honest, that's the nature of the culture today. That one jumps out at me. Another one is actually marketing yourself, particularly if you're going to start your own business and gaining recognition. Actually, I jump across to myself trying to make it as a professional golfer. It's extremely humbling after all these years of working through the fitness industry and having a certain amount of success with uh, some great companies and great teams. It's extremely humbling to go back to being at the bottom of the totem pole. And that's exactly where I am in golf. Who wants to, for example, sponsor a 50-year-old that's not played properly for 20 years who's trying to make a living when they could be sponsoring somebody who's established? That sensation, that feeling is no different to somebody who's trying to build their personal training business for the first time when down the road is every established business around them. One of the hardest things for them to do, and it's going to take persistence, smartness, an open ear is to develop your recognition, your reputation, and your marketing. And the beauty today, obviously, though, is social media is great, but there is still no better word of mouth than your clients talking about you and referring you. I couldn't agree more. And I just want to remind everyone at this point, one of my favorite takeaways from the first time we caught up, Tim, and it was very much back down to that, yep, we've all got social media and everyone uses online as a platform for promotion. But one of the things that you said was, When someone comes in to meet with you as a personal trainer or perhaps in your studio or in your gym, why not have a photo album or a scrapbook of, you know, photos from your current clientele, before and afters, testimonials, that type of thing, like have a tangible album that they can actually flick through while they're standing there. It's one of my favorite pieces and it's one of the things that many of our listeners have said to us, oh, you know, it's it's a simple idea, but it's such a good one to implement into our businesses. A good example, as you say that, you only have to look on Facebook these days. It happened to me the other day. Somebody put a picture of me in a helicopter from 30 years ago when I was a a lieutenant in the Royal Marines. (laughs) It's it's an old picture of from then and then a picture of how I look today. What I was amazed at was how many people looked at that picture and commented, how many people associated with it who have also been in the forces, so on and so forth. So what it did was it sparked conversation and it also sparked having something in common. And to back to the scrapbook, when you're waiting to meet whoever it is you're meeting, rather than reading that health magazine like you mentioned, real-life stories, real-life pictures, people who are like me, have been where I am, who want to go where I want to go, just opens the gates to a great reputation and a great conversation. Absolutely. I love it. Tim, let me ask you this. What, in your observation, has been the biggest challenge that you've seen gym owners face, I guess, in 2015, 2016? And do you have any advice to overcome or address those challenges? Well, actually, I've I've listened to probably about a dozen of the podcasts that you did last year in the last six to eight weeks. <laughs> because uh, you've been crash yeah. crash uh studying <laughs> crash studying yeah i have the uh the mental capacity and the attention capacity of somebody who needs to crash course learn <laughs> uh, what have they uh, also, what have you taken away from them <laughs> obviously there were some big things that people have talked about uh, the obvious ones technology 
How do we truly now use technology to work for us? Unfortunately, my experience, still today, so many gym owners, either they don't know it, they fear it, they don't want to pay for it, and therefore their head is buried in the sand. Technology and how you can use it. I listen to Brian O'Rourke, for example, who mm. to me is just the guru on this. Yeah. And I listen to Brian a lot whenever he talks about this. It's there for the taking. But understanding it, using it to your benefit, don't be afraid of it, go for it. Uh, I think um, there was one of the casts I was listening to, and it's an old thing I used many, many years ago. It was 168 hours in a week. At best, you touch this person face-to-face for three of them. How can we communicate with them for the other 165? How can we become part of their life even when we're not there? That's where technology is a big win for us. So I would say technology, the investment in it is obviously a challenge because what do you get? Uh, particularly now with group exercise, whether it be my zone, monitoring performance, et cetera. That one stood out to me uh, quite a lot. And then obviously the big one that's, it's not a recent trend, but it's a trend that's continued to evolve and change the industry, which is team training, small group training, boot camps, the CrossFits of this world, et cetera, et cetera. Even with Les Mills doing grit as opposed to the old style exercises we used to do. Team training is another huge one and, Obviously, in some of the gyms now, it's taken over in terms of the number one revenue stream for ancillary revenue. Yeah. So I would say those are big ones. But therefore, I'm, while I'm mentioning them, I'm not going to spend too long on them because everybody's talked about them. I still think there's some big challenges that we ignore. If tribe team training is an area that you're considering for your club, or if you just want to know more about it, make sure that you go back and have a listen to show 50. When I met with Adrian Antigua from Gainesville Health and Fitness, he talked in a huge amount of detail about how they implemented tribe team training into their club. He talked about attendance, frequency, and even down to the cost, plus much, much more. So that one is back in show 50. Now back to Tim. And can I just make three quick comments on it? Of course you can. The first one is, if you're actually the gym owner laying out the gym, it actually saves you a lot of money. Because where you open space, obviously you put your flooring down and some equipment, you've just saved yourself anywhere from 800 to $3,000 uh, per equipment, putting in cardio or other machines there. So it actually saves you in the facility build out. Second one, I would highly recommend that whatever you do, you also bring whoever it is in, for example, Life Fitness with um, the Life Circuit 360 to help you with the programming. Otherwise, it will just become a piece of equipment that gathers dust. And third and not last, uh, sorry, third and not least, make sure you get as many of you personal trainers and group exercise instructors involved in teaching as possible. Yeah, that last one is instrumental, isn't it, to make it a successful transition or a successful launch within the business? Oh, yeah. We, yeah. It, the key to cultural change and the key to success in anything you implement is finding a champion who sticks the flag at the top of the Everest and tells everybody to come follow me. And that tends to be the person that looks your members in the eyes the most, which generally is one of your fitness people. Tim, many PT businesses experience high turnover of personal trainers. I think, you know, I don't think that is specific to Australia. I think that's that's something across the globe. What sort of advice can you give gym owners or managers to keep their PTs for longer? <laughs> well, ironically, one of the podcasts I was listening to was uh, Cases. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't listen to any other podcast, listen to that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was tremendous, particularly yeah. with their passion for it. Yeah. Which you quite rightly said something. Unless you have a full book of clients, you better learn how to sell as a personal trainer, mm-hmm. which is something that uh, has always been there. Uh, The way I phrase it for personal trainers, though, is we don't want you to be the world's greatest salesperson. We want you to be the world's greatest order taker. So therefore, how do you become a great order taker? As a personal trainer, you do all the things you say you wanted to do. Help people, talk to people, be professional, change lives, get results. And by doing that, actually getting to the sale is a lot easier and you're a lot more passionate when you ask for it. So definitely, regardless of what we say, we've got to learn many, many skills, but you do need the ability to sell. And if you want to think of sales in a slightly different way as a personal trainer, normally in any industry, they say when you make a sale, they say you close the deal. Mm -hmm. That means it's done. Well, as a personal trainer, it's the opposite. You open the deal. 
Because what you've just done is open a relationship where they're going to keep seeing you forevermore, consequently reaching their results. So you're not closing a deal, you're opening the door. Think more of sales that way. We're not selling a car where then they go to the service department yeah. in six months' time. We are creating an opportunity where in pure trust, because they're investing in trust that you can do what you say you do, we now open the door to a future relationship where you both succeed. And that's all we're trying to do. Absolutely. Love it. Any others? Sure. Any other tips? Yeah, there's a couple of things when um, you look at the people. And we sort of mentioned this before. I identify what you want to stand for and then recruit around it. Um, so I would always absolutely recommend hire on personality, character, and attitude. Uh, another good book uh, was Marcus Buckingham, First Break All the Rules. And he talked about why certain leaders succeed and certain leaders fail. The ones who succeed are the ones that spend all their time trying to take out of the individual what was already put in there, which is normally character and talent. Mm -hmm. Then train their skills. The ones who fail spend all the time trying to put in skills that the person A doesn't want to learn anyway. So now you get a roadblock and they fail. So hire on the personality, character, and attitude that suits and matches what you want your business to stand for. Then, this is one that's not talked about a lot, but you actually asked it earlier when you talked about what challenges. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've always found that people who have failed, struggled, had a difficult time at some point in their life, as long as they're passionate and understand what they have to do, tend to succeed better in the world of personal training. And the reason I say that is if you've failed in something where you've hit rock bottom, maybe you've had to change career, maybe you've lost your job or you didn't pass college, you tend to see the signs a lot earlier. Secondly, you tend to recognize what you did to cause it. And thirdly, more importantly, nobody likes that feeling, so you tend to fight a lot harder to make sure it doesn't happen. Hence, that's why in many cases, people have maybe been in the, the armed services, et cetera, as we celebrate Memorial Day here this week, recognizing all the veterans and the servicemen in the USA and around the world, people who have gone through adversity, such as themselves, generally tend to make tremendous personal trainers if given the time and support. That's a great observation, Tim, and I guess that's something that we need to really look out for and I guess more than anything listen for because during the interview process, I would assume that most candidates don't willingly discuss or open up about failures that they've had. So I guess that's when it becomes so important to really listen to their history and listen to what they've been through when, when you're going through an interview process with a new trainer. Absolutely. If they, if they tell you they've never failed at something, then why are they coming to you for a job? Yeah. And then the other one I always hear from people who are being interviewed, they tell you they're a people person. Yeah. Well, Jack the Ripper was a people person. <laughs> So uh, I need to know a little bit more about you as personality and attitude before I say, okay, you're a people person. And is there any more, any more tips on that one? Yeah, and then obviously when you bring them on, uh, it takes six to 18 months for a PT to develop a career where they can become sustainable. Uh, so think about a training program that's not a one-hit wonder. You train them once and then hope they make it or we hope they can sell. Think of areas of business and professional development, i.e. business planning, how they communicate. There's so many ways we can communicate today. Group training, what specialities can we help train them in? We have to train them in sales. Service, do they really understand the difference between customer satisfaction and customer inspiration because they will make or break you? Uh, how to truly gain results. The human being, as we've all heard a million times before, is the most complicated machine in the world. So what works for one person won't work for the other. So develop your skills and understanding. Obviously educate them. Uh, and then really encourage an innovation of fun and also understanding human psychology and behavior if possible. I believe in one of the podcasts they was talking about them being uh, lifestyle consultants. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there to consider for them. That doesn't happen in a heartbeat. If you can build a training program that rewards that a long time, that would be tremendous. Tim, what trends do you think that we'll see in the fitness industry over the next 12 months? Uh, this is a little bit like planning who's going to win the World Cup. <laughs> a little bit. There's obvious contenders. There's favourites. But there will always be surprises. The reason I say that is We've heard, in, like I said earlier, in some of the tremendous podcasts and interviews you've done, both at conventions around the world, uh, what we believe are the trends. Uh, 
Uh, there's, there's three or four that truly jump out at myself. Uh, one is, as we talked about briefly earlier, the, the ongoing development of technology and communications, both inside and outside the four walls. And then just as important, how do we use the data that we receive? Do we just put it on a piece of paper and leave it to the side? Or we, do we truly use that data to communicate, encourage, inspire, and at times reprimand our clients? I would say another one is team training, group training, small group training, but on a far larger scale. Uh, you only have to look at things such as Spartan races. Uh, 30 years ago, they made me do it in the Marines. Now people pay to do it. I know, it's very, The world very. has changed. Uh, so things like think of your Spartan races. Uh, what could you do in your community to either train people for the races or train and put a team together? Could you as a gym or a small gym chain put together your own events in your area? Because the other thing I truly believe is never going to go away and is harder to do, being as people communicate less and less in person, is how do you build communities both internal and be a part of the community external? So what competitions if that's what the right word is, can you develop for your community? Two others really jump out at me. One, group exercise, as we just mentioned, is becoming more and more of a contrast in group exercise. The traditional group exercise classes, which we've all known for 15, 30 years, and then there's almost a huge divide from that to those who want high-intensity stamina-type training, team training, impact training, the CrossFits of this world, etc. So one of the key things for any member, sorry, one of the key things for any gym owner or operator or fitness team is to find the right balance between still offering the traditional so you maintain the client base you have and retain them, while at the same time trying to appeal to those who don't currently use your gym. And that will be a fine-tuning balance that perhaps in number, another conversation, another time, we could talk about how do we truly manage that in group exercise mm. so we're always on top of it. I think I'll take you up on that offer. We might get you back to have that conversation. Okay, I think my parole officer will let me do that. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and then perhaps the last one would be uh, time is an issue. Everybody's talking about time. They're rushing around, partly because they're not prepared to disengage and long enough to look after themselves. Uh, so looking at shorter-based impact training, shorter-based personal training sessions. Um, another reason why things like Orange Theory, for example, is great because you come in, you do your workout, you go, it's done. So thinking about how do you in your gym appeal to those who tell you they have no time but want to use a little bit of time to get fit. That is terrific. Thank you for sharing your crystal ball, shall we say it, your crystal ball uh, predictions perhaps for the next 12 months. Tim, with all the trends, the challenges, the opportunities and the moments that you have personally experienced over the past 30 years, what would you say has been like that outstanding moment or that greatest piece of business personal advice that you've ever received? Uh, well, first one is really simple. Uh, it was a CEO, chairman of a company. I was in a meeting with this individual, and they asked somebody who was ahead of a department a question. Now, this person was adamant their answer was correct. They were adamant they were on the right track. And within two minutes, their theory was disproved, their whole uh, thesis was changed, and they had to go back to the drawing board. When the meeting was finished, I asked the, uh, the chairman at the time, I said, how did you do that? He looked me in the eye, and he simply said, Tim, if ever you truly want to ask an important question, don't ask it till you already know the answer yourself. And I've thought about that for many years. I've used it in a thousand circumstances. But as a personal trainer, think about that. Until you're ready to ask the person in front of you whether they're going to become a client, remain a client, do something different, make sure you already know the answer. How do you know the answer? Get to know them, get to know their goals, their ambitions, and the true reason why they're here. They're not here to lose 10 pounds. If you remember, maybe two weeks ago, they said because they want to go and walk for a leukemia charity on a 10-mile run and have never been able to do that before. So one big thing, never ask an important question until you already know the answer yourself. I think that's, I think that's a great one. And do you want to tell us about any kind of really outstanding moments that you have had in the past 30 years, something that, that really struck a chord with you? Oh, um, 
Yeah, I'll keep this quick as best I can. Uh, there was a couple. One was uh, working for the team Fitness First in the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2004, at the last moment, we became a sponsor for uh, Sports Relief, where the idea was to have as many people in the UK walk a mile, and it all went towards Sports Relief charity, a bit like Red Nose Day. Uh, the team were amazing. We had 150 gyms, and before you know it, across 90 locations, we put together teams that did the warm-ups, did the workouts, did the cool-downs, did events, you name it. For example, a few of us were lucky enough to stand on Trafalgar Square and teach aerobics, as we called it, to 10,000 people in the rain. An amazing experience to see what can be done when you all align together. And if I can share one quick one, a personal one, which was also um, a learning moment. Please do. Uh, there's a gentleman, uh, I've never forgot this, i worked with him for a long time. Uh, his name is Kerry Hannon. He actually uh, works for Virgin Active in South Africa running their fitness. Uh, the one thing I'll say about Kerry Hannon, uh, when he taught a class, people said, I wish I could do that. When I taught a class, they say, oh, I want to do that. He was so gifted, yet the most humble human being with that amount of talent I've ever met. And the reason I say that was we were... We both got invited to teach at the European Aerobics Festival in Amsterdam in 2002. I had no idea what I was getting into. I just took my disco suit, um, a big Afro wig, and I'm going to teach disco. We get there, and the classes have anywhere from 1,800 to 2,500 people in them. They have four mini stages because they're in an indoor football arena where professionals stand on those stages so everybody can see them as well as the actual presenters. And then at 8 o'clock, the first presenter went, who was apparently in the top three world Latin dance champions. I watched him. I was mesmerized. The next guy went at 9 o'clock, a guy called David Vanderveld, brilliant performer, uh, who him and his team are top two or three in Europe in funk, hip-hop, whatever you call that, dancing. And then the next person was me to go and do disco aerobics in my white suit and Afro wig. And it's the only time in my life that I can truly remember fear stopped me doing something i didn't want to do it and kerry was on after me and he was talking to me in the 15 minute break before i was supposed to go on and he asked what my problem was i looked at the i said to him these guys are amazing i can't do what they do i look at the crowd i look at what they're looking at i don't do that i'm i struggle with rhythm never mind that movement kerry said to me it's very simple he said what do you do that they don't do I said i don't know he said you make them smile you make them laugh and you make them have fun. And he says, all of us put together, don't do that the way you do it. Next thing I know, I'm on stage with two and a half thousand people having a whale of a time. We had fun, we had a smile. Was it successful? I don't know, but we did get back invited back the next year. That is such Thank a you. wonderful story, Tim. No worries. Thank you, Kerry. <laughs> yeah. So that's something you're never going to forget. Have you got any photos from that day? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. I think you uh, might that's... need to share that with <laughs> with the Fitness Business uh, Podcast Tribe. I think we might need to get one of those photos. All right, I'll yeah? get that. Oh, dear. You willing? <laughs> I'm willing. I've done so many stupid things in my life. One more is not going to change it. <laughs> it is It is a wonderful story. Thank you for sharing that. Tim, I'm hoping you can leave us with a little bit of fit bizpiration today. Can you give us your top three tips for our tribe to take away after today's interview? Well, as we said at the beginning, we're talking to the tribe. Booyah, boom, baby, let's do this. <laughs> so first one is, I'm going to give you a really quick. First one is, have fun. Enjoy what you do. Remember last time? What did fun stand for, Chantel? Um, so, uh, I want to say something unusually naughty. But yes, feeling unusually feeling naughty. Feeling unusually naughty. <laughs> have I remember fun, the like naughty you. bit. <laughs> 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 feeling fun. unusually naughty. There you go. It <laughs> means different things around the world, so be careful where you say. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is when you look at your business, you can really strip it down to three basic things. The first one is to clarify. The second one is to simplify. The third one is to exemplify. What do I mean by that? Anything you do, clarify the why. Why are you truly doing this? What is the value in it? When you understand that, Now you will always have the passion to do it. You will always have the vision and the goal. So clarify the why. Second one is simplify the what. So once you know why you want to do something, then simplify what you need to do to achieve it. And once you've simplified it, simplify it again because it can always be simpler. 
And last but not least, once you've clarified why, simplified what to do, then damn well go exemplify how to do it. Be the best at whatever it is you're trying to do. And with all that said and done, that then leads to the final thing, which is to raise the bar. And remember, raise the bar isn't just standing at a bar with me in the corner on an Irish night. <laughs> Raising the bar is truly starts with your belief, which will drive your attitude, which will drive your actions. Then in turn, that will drive the results you get. Tim, you're an absolute champion. Thank you so much for joining us once again on the show, your repeat performance. And I really hope that you'll agree and come back again and we can delve into even some of those uh, sections a little bit more. So thank you, thank you, thank you once again for joining us on the Fitness Business Podcast. No problem. My pleasure. Loved it. And I will try and dig up one of those Afro pictures for you. Please do. We would love that. (laughs) The Fitness Business Podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners. Here's a quick word from one of our partners. The new Active Management Membership is perfect to help reduce your stress of running a fitness business with shortcuts, tools, and education all at your fingertips. You will be strengthened as a leader and a business with the new Active Management Membership. To find out more, go to activemgmt.com.au and click on the big blue button that says you can be a member now. There are four packages to suit every budget and need. It's time for the Fitness Business Podcast Wrap. There were so many great takeaways from this week's show, but I'm going to leave you with two of my absolute favorites, and they were big ones. The first one is Tim said, hire on personality, character, and attitude, not just on education and sales skills. We can train everything from a skill perspective, but we can only encourage bringing out the personality, the character, and the attitude that matches the vision for your team. And the second one, he said, train, develop, and reward and encourage in all areas of business performance and success. For example, business planning, communications, group training, specialties, sales, service, results, uh, education, innovation of fun, and also psychology. Now, one last thing, guys, we're going to remind you one last time, don't forget to go out and check out those photos that Tim talked about in this week's show notes, which is at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. You are going to see Tim's true personality and energy shine through with those pics. Now, to celebrate our one-year birthday, our friends at Active Management are giving everyone a free business resource download valued at $100. To get your gift, go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. You can choose from one of four resources. Do not miss out. Jump on today. Once again, that was fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Now, next week, I'm so excited. We're going to be joined by the incredible Casey Conrad. I caught up with Casey for a round of quick fire five questions, and here is what she had to say. Okay. Now, despite a couple of, let's call them hurdles, shall we, Casey? We have managed to connect again. So welcome back to the show. We have a problem, <laughs> Oh, goodness. We're here. So let's get cracking with your quick fire five questions. Casey, why do you do what you do? Because I'm the best. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, you know, I want to inspire fitness professionals to be the best they can possibly be. And quite frankly, I know I can help them. That's it's easy. Great answer. And what's the best advice that you've ever received? Oh, I pass this on to every shower I go to. My grandmother told me, when you're pissed at your husband, don't ever, ever call your mother. Call his mother because his mother will forgive him. Your mother never will. <laughs> I love that. And what's a personal habit that helps you become better at what you do? I think curiosity. Um, I like to study what other industries do and try to bring that back into fitness. And that's really been a, just a total game changer for me. That's a, That's a great one. Tell us what's one book that you'd recommend and why? Oh, sits on my nightstand since 1987, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Just know this. If you're a chick, 
you got to read it with a certain attitude because when it tells you you need to have a good wife by your side and all this other crap, it's difficult to swallow. But if you read the content, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> good one. And uh, now why should our tribe come back and listen to our show next week? Well, because we are going to provide them with the highest quality information to help them get better at what they're doing and we're gonna have a few laughs at the same time well i'm convinced so we can't wait to have you back next week thanks casey you're welcome tribe make sure you tune in next week to hear the full interview with casey thank you so much for joining me for another week of the fitness business podcast and remember what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments but what is woven into the lives of others great show this week that you should be suffering DLMs, delayed onset mind soreness, as you are overloaded and that's when your mind is strengthened. You and your business have been strengthened thanks to the amazing support of our premier sponsor, Active Management. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au only if you want to strengthen your business and your leadership. Don't forget all today's links and notes are found at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com where you can also subscribe and never miss a show and maybe win a prize. Next week is another incredible guest with Chantal, so get ready for more Fit Bizpiration. <laughs>